Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Universal's third quarter 2024 earnings conference call. As a reminder, this conference call is being recorded. I would now like to turn the conference over to Arash Salamani, Chief Strategy Officer. Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome to our quarterly earnings call. On the call with me today are Steve Donaghy, Chief Executive Officer, and Frank Wilcox, Chief Financial Officer. Before we begin, please note today's discussion may contain forward-looking statements and non-GAAP financial measures. Forward-looking statements involve assumptions, risks, and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially from those statements. For more information, Please see the press release and Universal's SEC filings, all of which are available on the Investor section of our website at universalinsuranceholdings.com and on the SEC's website. A reconciliation of non-GAAP financial measures to comparable GAAP measures is included in the quarterly press release and can also be found on Universal's website at universalinsuranceholdings.com. With that, I'll turn the call over to Steve. Thanks, Rash. Good morning, everyone. Our hearts and thoughts go out to those impacted by recent disasters, including Hurricanes Debbie and Helene in the third quarter and Hurricane Milton in the fourth quarter. We've been through many hurricanes in our nearly three decade history, arming us with the requisite experience to quickly and efficiently get policyholders back on their feet. Our substantial reinsurance protection and the strong reinsurance relationships that we've built over many years provide us with the financial resilience to weather both high frequency and high severity storm seasons. As we've previously disclosed, our consolidated retention drops for subsequent events and we expect a smaller financial impact from weather in the fourth quarter, inclusive of Hurricane Milton. Non-catastrophe underwriting trends continue to improve and we're highly encouraged as we look ahead. On a separate note, we opened for business in Wisconsin at the beginning of the month, our 19th state. We're excited to offer our insurance products there as we continue to expand to new markets, diversifying our book of business and growing our addressable market. I'll turn it over to Frank to walk through our financial results. Frank. Thanks, Steve. Good morning. Adjusted loss per common share was 73 cents compared to an adjusted loss per common share of 16 cents in the prior year quarter. The higher adjusted net loss available to common stockholders mostly stems from lower underwriting income, partially offset by higher net investment income and commission revenue. Core revenue of 381.4 million was up 5.4% year over year, with growth primarily stemming from higher net premiums earned, net investment income, and commission revenue. Direct premiums written were 574.4 million, up 8% from the prior year quarter, including 2.1% growth in Florida and 32.9% growth in other states. Overall growth mostly reflects higher policies in force, higher rates, and inflation adjustments. Direct premiums earned were 507.7 million, up 7% from the prior year quarter, reflecting direct premiums written growth over the past 12 months. Net premiums earned were 345.7 million, up 4.4% from the prior year quarter. The increase is primarily attributable to higher direct premiums earned, partially offset by a higher seated premium ratio. The net combined ratio was 116.9%, up 6.2 points compared to the prior year quarter. The increase reflects higher net loss and expense ratios. The 91.7% net loss ratio was up 4.7 points compared to the prior year quarter, with the increase primarily attributable to higher weather losses, mostly from Hurricane Helene, partially offset by more favorable prior year reserve development. The net expense ratio was 25.2%, up 1.5 points compared to the prior year quarter, with the increase primarily attributable to higher policy acquisition costs associated with growth growth outside Florida and higher operating costs. 
During the quarter, the company repurchased 226,000 shares at an aggregate cost of $4.4 million. The company's current share repurchase authorization program has approximately $10.3 million remaining. On July 11, 2024, the Board of Directors declared a quarterly cash dividend of $0.16 cents per share of common stock payable on August 9, 2024 to shareholders of record as of the close of business on August 2, 2024. With that, I'd like to ask the operator to open the line for questions. And thank you. As a reminder, to ask a question, please press star 1-1 on your telephone and wait for your name to be announced. To withdraw your question, please press star 1-1 again. Please stand by while we compile the Q&A roster. And one moment for our first question. And that first question comes from Paul Newsom from Piper Sandler. Your line is now open. Good morning. Um, thanks for the call. And I always appreciate the help. Um, can we talk about the reserve development to start with? Um, just give us some ideas about what the sources of the development was. Yeah, good morning, Paul. It's Frank. Um, we actually had favorable development this quarter of just around $2.2 million from prior year CATS. Great. Uh, any any particular source, whether it's just CATS or, you know, at all property? Well, a lot of the names that you recognize, Irma, Ian, uh, Matthew, Michael, some of which uh, were minor, other which uh, a little bit more significant. Um, any additional detail you can give us on the cat losses in the quarter between lean and, and other, uh, as well as um, the, is there anything in those cat losses that are un, unusual or different than what you typically see after a, a large storm? And I think flood versus um, <clears throat> versus wind mix may be a little different this time around, but that's just a conjecture on my part. Yeah, good morning, Paul. It's Steve Dun Dunnegy. Um, yeah, I think from a loss perspective, as we look at the three hurricanes now between Debbie, Helene, and Milton, uh, we're looking at a range for all three storms, somewhere between 600 and 900 million to the company. You know, our net our net uh, retention on those, Debbie's small. It's probably on, it's somewhere under $20 million, and uh, Helene will be a full retention loss to the companies along with our isosceles, so roughly $111 million to the company, and the rest will be picked up by our reinsurance partners. And then uh, Milton will be, as you know, is a lower, our, our second tower has a lower retention of $45 million, so we expect that to be incurred in Q4. And, you know, thanks to our claims operation, which is heavily deployed and trying to assist all of our policyholders, in the various areas impacted, which is a pretty serious geography for, for uh, all the carriers. Um, you know, they are now handling the storm, and we're trying to handle as many of the claims internally as possible uh, because we feel we do it better, and we also kind of understand how to adjust uh, our team's really experience between the flood and the uh, wind and what the impacts of those two are. So uh, we're being very careful how we do it. Um, I think the, the, from a claims incoming perspective, uh, while every storm has a, some nuance, the claim counts have been coming in at a steady flow. So I think people were listening to the messaging to uh, be safe and get out of the impacted areas. I think that's a new, it's a very good dynamic for the state. And I think that uh, it's good that insureds are listening to their, their uh, the, the folks that are trying to help them. So we've seen a steady flow rather than a real big uh, peak, so to say. So uh, we feel good about where we're at, and we're hoping to recover as much of those retentions in uh, in Q4 with our operating staff. So uh, if you have any other questions, happy to answer. But that's kind of an overview. Do you think um, most of the recovery re um, revenue from claims management, et cetera, will happen for both storms in the um, in the fourth quarter, or do you think um, we might see something maybe perhaps for Milton all the way to first or um I yeah mean, yes. it's a great question you know we, we yeah great question paul we we don't as we sit here today we're not 100 percent sure that we'd recover all those expenses especially in q4 i think you'll see some of that tail into um into 2025 so 
Um, hard to tell exactly where what we're going to recover uh, as we sit here now. We'll have a better idea of that as we get into Q4. But, uh, you know, the most important thing for us is to get out, see the insureds, make sure we're doing the right things, and getting them back on their feet uh, at their moment of need. So th th that's the paramount goal for us as we're uh, entering Q4 right now. Um, maybe just one last big picture question. Um, the weather obviously makes it more complicated to figure out kind of what's going on on a normalized basis. Could you, you know, give us your most recent thoughts, maybe, you know, year to date or so, about what you think is happening on kind of that normalized uh, underwriting basis, because you've got a lot of stuff going on with pricing and short reform and other factors. Uh, do you think you're still making improvements in the underwriting results into next year because of those factors? Yeah, Paul, we, we you know, we changed our kind of tone from cautiously optimistic to op optimistic sometime uh, this year. And we, we see very favorable underwriting results uh, coming in the door. I think our, our agency relationships continue to generate business where we are open. And I think out, outside the state of Florida, our relationships as they grow in our newer states, uh, people develop a comfort level with us about how we operate, how we respond to their questions and needs, and how we treat their, their clients or our insured, so to say. Um, I think as we looked at the legislative uh, reforms and we looked at our rates, you know, we we uh, adjusted some models in a positive manner to Floridians. So we ended up in a scenario where we had a, a small reduction in uh, premium uh, at our most uh, recent filings, which I think, you know, when you think of the, the, the typical insured in Florida after getting increases of, you know, somewhere between 10 and 15 percent over the last several years, a flat or a reduction is a really uh, good impact to the people that own homes in Florida. So, uh, and we're being very cautious about where we're open and continuing to work on our, our spread of business within the state of Florida. So I, I think you would say that as we continue to grow and mature, we're trying to be as smart as possible with the experience we've gained over, you know, for me, 20 years and for others in the company over the last 30 years um, in the state of Florida. So. Good. Uh, we, we feel good about the future. Very good. good. Appreciate the help as always. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. And thank you. And one moment for our next question. And our first question comes from Nick Lasavillo from Dowling and Partners. Your line is now open. Great, thanks. I'm sorry if you had already answered this question, but do we be considering any additional reinstatement premiums that flow through following Milton? Well, a lot of the uh, the layers, especially at the lower end of the tower, and I don't have it in front of me, are covered by reinstatement premium protection. So although layers would have to be replenished, uh, many would not trigger a reinstatement premium for us that would uh, drop to the bottom line. Uh, depending on how far it goes into the tower, the possibility exists. But, you know, as I said, I don't have it in front of me to say when that would occur. And, Nick, uh, if, if it helps for your models, I wouldn't see any of that occurring in Q4 due to the nature and pace of claims coming in. Okay, thanks. That's helpful. That was the only question I had. All right, Nick, thanks. Have a good day. And thank you. And I am showing no further questions. I would now like to turn the call back over to Steve Donahue, Chief Executive Officer. Thank you. Um, good morning. I'd like to thank all of our associates, consumers, our agency force, and our stakeholders uh, for their continued support of Universal. I uh, wish you all a great day. This concludes today's conference call. Thank you for participating. You may now disconnect.